amazing what the Holy Spirit showed me the last few days when he gave me this for us today. Right? Okay, let's go into many do not know really what is the meaning of this tithe or what is the hidden between this tithe that we some give to the Lord or is it only for the Jews or is it under law or is it under grace? What is that got to do with us? And let's look into the word of God, yeah? Because there's a really, a, a, a mystery means something hidden, something hidden that is so powerful that not everyone saw it. <laughs> Treasures that are hidden inside. Okay, let's go into the word, yeah? Galatians 3, 26 to 27. All of you are God's children because you believe in Christ Jesus. Here, Paul was talking to uh, Jewish Christians as well, okay, in Galatia. Jews who have received the Lord, yeah, and there were Gentiles there as well. Gentiles are those who are not Jews. So both, he was talking to them. And he said to the Galatian church, all of you, Jews and Gentiles, okay, are who believe in Jesus, all are God's children, all right? They baptized you as believers in Christ. That means you have put on Christ like someone put on new clothes, okay? It does not matter whether you are a Jew or a Gentile. It does not matter whether you are a slave or a free person. It does not matter whether you are a man or a woman. You all belong together because you all belong to Christ Jesus, right? So it doesn't matter whether we are Chinese, Indian, Malaysian, Singaporean, but mainly here you have this Jew and Gentile, okay? So you all understand whoever is not a Jew is a Gentile, okay, from the Bible. So here Paul says, all belong to Christ, okay? Both Jew and Gentile, man or woman, right? And if you belong to Christ, then you are descendants of Abraham, which means Ruth is a Gentile, Roof, our roof go. <laughs> okay, right? Or a Chinese and not a Jew by uh, uh, natural descent, but she too in Christ has become a descendant of Abraham. So is everyone here, okay, who is not a Jew. So Jews are descendants of Abraham, correct? Mm. Okay. So because of that, right, because we are descendants of Abraham, every one of you here, although you are not Jew by birth, you will receive the good things that God promised Abraham. So you all know what are the good things? <laughs> A lot of good things, right? God promised Abraham descendants as the sky the stars in the sky all right and then the sand on the seashore there's plenty all right he promised blessings of land that's why when they uh, went into the promised land the jews conquered uh, sorry the israelites that time they were called yeah conquered the land and with the land they got all the physical blessings right honey uh what houses that they didn't build milk Right, land of milk and honey, fruits, grapes, all the physical, material blessings of the land. Okay, God promised Abraham and promised to give to Abraham and his descendants, which are the who are the Jews. Okay, the Israelites coming from the name of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. Okay, so that's when the Israelites sort of got their name. Okay, so if so, all of us, <coughs> excuse me, Jew and Gentile, okay, today, which is new creation in Christ, all can receive the 
blessings of Abraham. Okay, so how? Let's look some more. So in that way, Abram one. So here we go to Genesis fourteen. Okay, Genesis twelve. God promised, gave the promise to Abraham that you leave your fathers, you leave your country, your family, your home, and then not the family. The family was with him. Okay, but what his his father? Okay family and then you go to this place i tell you and there i will bless you okay and all the people of the earth will be blessed through him then at genesis 14 god again what happened abraham had a uh won a, a battle all right against the enemy and the kings and as abram was returning home the king of sodom came out to meet him and they met in the valley of Shaveh, which people call the king's valley. Then Melchizedek was the king of Salem. Melchizedek, according to scholars, is Jesus today, all right? Appeared to uh, Abram. And he was priest of the Most High God. He brought out bread and wine for Abraham. So you can see that Jesus, right, instituted. Uh, uh, the bread and wine signifying that he will be our provision okay his body and his wine for our life then he blessed abraham or abram at that time he said i pray that the most high god who made heaven and earth or possessor of heaven and earth will bless abram praise the most high god he has given you power over your enemies okay so that time after that abram gave Melchizedek a tenth part of everything that he won in the battle. Okay, so he was giving unto Jesus in the Old Testament. Okay, Melchizedek, why is, is a king and uh, <clears throat> he has no descent, so no one knows actually where he came from, the Bible says. Okay, so the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give back to me all my people. So he has already conquered. All right. Take everything else for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have made a strong promise to the Lord, the most high God who made heaven and earth. So the enemy said, you can take everything, the material things, all right, but give me back my, the people. And Abram said, no. I promise that I will not take anything that belong to you. Okay, so he won from the enemy the things that belong to the enemy, right? The king of Sodom. And for Abraham, he said, I don't want anything that belong to the enemy. Okay, I will not take even the smallest thing, not even a piece of string or a part of a shoe. Okay, then you will never be able to say, I made Abraham very rich. Okay. The enemy today, of course, is the devil, right? Mm. So it says, the devil will never say that you made me rich. Okay? Look here. After this, the Lord spoke to Abram in a dream. So that is chapter 15, Genesis 15. After this, is after this event, right? When he tied to Melchizedek after the victory and gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything that he won. Okay. After this, the Lord spoke to Abram in a dream, and God said, do not be afraid, Abram. <laughs> so I just shared this a little bit before, probably after he gave the tenth, <laughs> which is, we don't know how much is it, but it's quite a lot. Yeah, it should be that he was a little bit of fear came into him. Okay. And I will keep you safe. I myself will keep you, will give you many good gifts. So in the original translation, it is, I will be your shield. Shield is to protect, right? Yeah, protect from harm, from uh, people stealing him, stealing his uh, goods, because he was talking about he has given away his, his tenth of what he has won, material things. And then God said, I will give you much more. I will be your exceedingly great reward. So you remember what uh, Abram said? I will not let you, king of Sodom, ever think that you are the one who gave me all the gifts and made me rich. So now God is saying, yes, I am the one who will be your reward. 
I am the one who will give you, all right, many good gifts in a simple version, all right, of the things of this world. Okay, and I will keep you safe. That is what the Lord Almighty says. I'm the Lord and I do not change because of my promises to my people. I've not destroyed you, descendants of Jacob. I have, then let's come to, because today we're going to unveil, the Holy Spirit unveiled to us the mystery of the tithe and the tithers. So let's go straight into, so remember Abraham was never under the law, right? He is before Moses, okay? So he already, start, the, the word tithe came in already during Abraham's time. He already put the ten, one ten or whatever he won and gave it to Jesus or Melchizedek. So tithing is not just of the law, okay? So then, but then, after Abraham, down descendants, you have Moses, okay? And then God gave the law or Ten Commandments to Moses. So in that law was tithing again. Now tithing was incorporated into the law, okay? But it was originally out of the law, okay? So I have told you my commands, but you do not listen to me any longer. You have not obeyed me. So before we come to the famous verse that we all know, Malachi 3.10, let's study a little bit because in order to find out mystery, we need to dig deeper, right? <laughs> Otherwise, we always just get what people say. All right? We don't want to just get what people say. Let's look into the whole chapter of, uh, or rather, rather from verse 7 of Malachi. Okay? I have told you my commands, but do not listen to me any longer. But you do not listen to me any longer. So Malachi was a prophet of God, okay? Another a minor prophet talking to the children of Israel, okay? And what happened is that the children of Israel have not obeyed, all right? Speaking on God's behalf, God is saying that the children of Israel that time was not obeying God, okay? Not listening to uh, God. Ever, even since the time of your ancestors. Now, we turn to me. So God's talking to the children to come back to him. So the context of Malachi 3.10 is God telling the children of Israel, the Jews, okay, to return to him. Okay? So are they physically there? They, of course they are there. So what, why did God tell them to return to him? He said, return to me and I will return to bless you. That is what the Lord Almighty says. But you ask, so the people ask, how do we return to you? Okay? It's like God saying, come, come back to me. All right? Then how? How do we come back to you? He said, I say to you, a man should not rob God, but you are robbing me. So God was talking to the Jews, okay? to the Israelites. That's so why just now I show you today in Christ, Jew and Gentile, same. <laughs> Which is, now can talk to us also, okay? But a little bit different because we are not under law as is we have to do this. No one has to type, okay? As you go on, we will see why, all right? Or what it actually means. A man should not rob God, but you are robbing me. So God's telling the, his children, the Jews, you, they are robbing him. But you ask, how do we rob you? Okay, I say, you do not give me the tithes and the offerings that you should give. Now, if you have heard of this in a lawful manner, take it out from your mind first, okay? I'm not telling here today that you rob God and you have to pay tithes. Take that out, okay? If it has been put inside your head, remove it. <laughs> Get it out of your head, okay? That is not supposed to be taught that way, okay? Okay, just let's look into this, okay? So you do not give me the tithes and offerings that you should give because the Jews were under the law. And in the law, they have to give their tithes and their offerings. So they got different, different tithes and all the offerings that God have set and put down in the law or instructions for them to follow in order for them to be blessed. Okay? All right. So... When they don't obey the law, <laughs> when they don't bring their tithes and offerings, they are robbing God. So why are they robbing God? Okay, yes, all of you are robbing me. The whole nation of Israel is guilty because they are under the law. 
Okay, when they don't follow the law, then of course they are guilty and they will come under curse. You will receive the punishment of curse. So the curse in the commandments is thou shalt <laughs> do this, thou shalt do that, everything. The moment they don't do in order to be blessed, right? If they don't do that, they don't obey, they will be punished, okay, under a curse because Jesus haven't come yet and they were chosen people of God. So then we come to the verse, all right, Malachi 3.10. Now you must bring the whole tithe that belongs to me. So it's very clear, the tithe belongs to who? God. So he tells, God tells the Jews through Malachi, the prophet, that this tenth of whatever you have belongs to him, all right, belongs to God store in my temple so there'll be food in my house obey me and you will see what i will do that is what the lord almighty says you will see how much i will bless you okay so there is obedience there when they bring their type according to the law and god will bless them you will not have enough room to store all the good things that i give you okay and I will pour out blessings out of the sky like rain. So the Israelites had to give in the commentary there by the scholars of the Bible. All right, the Israelites had to give some of their crops to the temple. This under the law to take care of it. They also had to give something to the priests and the Levites because they worked there. Each year they gave one part of a tenth or tithe of the crops and money they that they had received. They could give more if they wanted to, okay? Okay, so remember, this is in the context of God telling them to return to Him, okay? And this is how they return to Him, God said, in your tithing and offering, okay? And then He said, I will stop insects from eating your crops. The grapes will not fall from your vines before they are ready to eat. This is the their job, the work of their hands, right? It won't be aborted early. You start a business before you can get profit. No more ready. All right. So this is God is promising them protection. Remember, just like what God told Abraham, I will be your, I will, you will be safe. I will protect you and I will be your exceeding great reward. You will receive many good things from me. Okay. So this is protection from the enemy of their uh, whatever work they are doing, the grapes. Can you imagine? They need the grapes to ripen. Then only they can go and sell it, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, or make wine. Yeah. So if they fall out from the this the branch, then gone already. Cannot use. Okay, before time. So this is a promise of protection as well over their income, over their livelihood. So okay, a little bit. This one you may have already. I've talked a little bit before somewhere in a, another sermon but not as a main okay so here the tithe in hebrew so praise the lord we were able to study hebrew yeah to understand more about the letters the hebrew letters which are powerful letters of energy and power so in the the tithe in the original means ma'asir okay uh and it means a tenth part or payment of a tenth basically it just means tenth okay <clears throat> then comes from the word the origin of this ma'asir is the word asha all right asha which is ayin shin and resh and it asha means rich or wealthy so that means when the jews they communicate with one another they want to say you are a rich person asha <laughs> okay say you are rich asha okay so in the type is the word rich inside origin Okay, make wealthy or acha means you are uh, in Hebrew. Okay, you need many uh, English words to bring out the meaning. Okay, it can mean to gain riches, to become rich. All right, so in the progress of becoming rich, there's acha also, right? Accumulate to grow rich. Now, this rich is the physical one, material one. Okay, okay, so simple one, which uh, the, the letters of tight is mem, ayin, chin, resh, and the root word is. Okay, what is this again? The word? Not the letters. What is it? Uh, this one is ma'ase. This is asha. Okay, and asha means 
rich or pro pro process of becoming rich, okay? Making wealth. This, see the same word? So only difference is the letter mem, okay? Added in. So mem is the waters, always speak of abundance, waters and nations. Ayin is the spiritual eye, all right? To see the, the realm of God, spiritual realm, okay? Then shin is the fire to consume and destroy. So you know the thief. So you have uh, shin in the promise of the protection of God. He will destroy the devourer, right? The enemy who try to abort your blessings or whatever you are doing. And then the rash is acknowledging the highest person, okay? The first person, the beginning, the man's head, okay? So this is in the type, very powerful uh, letters inside which form the, the word type in Hebrew, okay? That when you type or when there's a type there, someone brings a type, they open themselves up to the spiritual realm. They can see spiritually, spiritual things, and they will have the blessing of the God's fire destroying the enemy over their crop or their work or their business. As Jesus, they type to the Lord, Right? Jesus is the head. Okay. And this is the one that the Holy Spirit showed me this revelation. Tenth, for some of us, who have, or most of us here who have already learned about the Hebrew alphabets. And if you haven't, you can still go through in the <clears throat> available in the uh, group. Ten, we all know, is the number. Tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabets is the letter Yud. Yeah, all very clever idea, okay? So the Yud, okay, now you remember all the alphabets of the Hebrew are there. They have purpose, they have meaning, all right, and they have power, okay? So each letter has a very powerful meaning. The tenth letter of the 22 alphabets is the letter Yud. And then the type is the tenth part. Okay, the 10 part of whatever we receive or earn or make in terms of this uh, physical wealth. So it is the smallest letter. So most of the time, of course, uh, we understand the yud represent the hand of God. All right, the mighty fiery hand of God. <clears throat> and also the yud is the smallest letter in the whole Hebrew alphabets. It is, according to rabbis, it's like even a point. You put a pen with ink and you just put a, before you can do any word, you, have, it, you start with a dot. <laughs> it is the youth, the little to the uh, rabbis <clears throat> on Judaism. They say it is the little that holds a lot. Correct? So it is like a beginning or so. Before you can write other words, you start with the you, uh, the dog, right? So it is small, all right, which speaks of humility, all right? And also it begins and it becomes bigger and bigger as you write, right? You put in more things. And one rabbi said, you know, it starts here from heaven, one little dot beginning from heaven above, and then it pours down the blessings on this earth, right? This tent is so powerful. We may not see it. It's just a tenth of our income or whatever we have. But it is the beginning of big blessing. That's why it says, God says in Malachi 3.10, I will open the windows of heaven. But it starts from the tenth, the youth, the smallest one, okay? Which is the beginning of something big. Yeah, okay? I mean, to, to me, that was very exciting. <laughs> I didn't read it from anywhere. So I says, oh, wow, no wonder. Because for a long time, I really fully couldn't understand how God opened windows of heaven so big that there's not enough room to receive it. But it all starts from the little dot, the youth. All right, it's when God, when we, the tide, when the Jews put in the tide, the tent, then God's hand, another thing is God's hand begin to move. You want man's hand or God's hand? We work very hard, but then we need the 
divine hand of God to move in our finances, in our job, for favor, for blessings to come in. We need His hand. And that is in the tenth, in the tithe. Okay, then look some more. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> I came across this picture a long time ago. I didn't quite understand until uh, uh, to a few days or yesterday. The, for the Jews, the, the, the letter Yud actually is the Hebrew, the, the Jewish people. <laughs> I don't forgot what is the name you call them. <laughs> All right. The tag, the face, and the quotes. That's how the Jewish wear. All right. They look. Okay. And it, look, it looks like the, the Jew, the Yud. Okay. That ten. And you see that the words Jerusalem, Israel, and Jesus all start with the letter Yud. Okay, the 10. Right, it starts with the letter Yud, the smallest letter. That's why Jerusalem, Jews, Israel, and Jesus all belong to God. The Jews were God's people. When you say God's people, means what? Belong to God. Okay, and just now we read in Galatians, we all belong to Jesus, both either Jew or Gentile, because we believe in Jesus. So the main thing is here, first, we belong to God. Okay, so just now you read about the tithe, right? In Malachi 3, before uh, verse 7, it says, the tithe belong to me. All right, God said to the Jews. Okay. And what happened? You will be after the tithing, talking about the tithes, continue from Malachi 3, 10, 11 is the protection. And then come to verse 12. Let's look. You will be happy to live in your land. And the people of all nations will see that God has blessed you. And that is what the Lord Almighty says. So now the attention turned from the tithe to the tither. <laughs> okay, the one who tithe is called tither, right? To the people who are tithing, to the Jews who are coming back to God, which is the tither. Now the tither, right? When they put back the tithe, give back to God, what? Because it belongs to God. These people now will be seen by the other nations as a people who are blessed, okay, by God. So look, it's at the people now. So the Lord says, you have spoken bad words against me, but you ask, what have we said against you? Again, he's talking to the Jews, okay? We have said, we serve God, but that has not helped us at all. We are careful to do what he tells us to do. When we do wrong things, he, we have set faces to show the Lord Almighty that we are sorry, but it is proud people that God blesses. Yes, it is the people who do evil things who become rich. God does not even punish people who like to test him. That is what we think. So the people who have disobeyed God have become to think this way. Oh, we obey you for what? <laughs> we serve you for what? We obey the commandments. We bring our tithes and offerings for what? Lord, you, you, you did, I, we don't see blessed. You see the people who didn't you know, uh, do, and then they are the one blessed who are blessed. So they were thinking wrongly. Then those who, whose lives honored God. Uh, so in the context of Malachi 3, it's about the tithe and the tither, correct? So, for people, for when God said, come back and bring back your tithes, to me, are the ones who honour God. Okay? So, they got together and they talked it over. <laughs> Those who tithe. Alright? And God saw that they, what they were doing and listened in. <laughs> God is eavesdropper. <laughs> okay, so don't think we can uh, keep secret from God. Okay, God will listen. All right, He saw, He can see, and He can listen. God, a book in the message version, I found this version very interesting. Today's version a book was opened in God's presence. They don't know, huh? <laughs> God was there. Okay, and uh, minutes were taken of the meeting. <laughs> 
because you know I take minutes a lot in my uh, secular job in the past, so I found it very amusing. Okay, actually, in in the original, it just means that there was a scroll, all right, and uh, you have this, the people there writing down. So what were they writing down? Okay, they were writing down the minutes with the the names of the God fearers. Okay, or those who honored God, right? Written down all the names of those who honored God's name. So remember, it's in the context of tithing and offering, right? So those who who tithe and offered were considered as by God as those who honor Him, and all their names were written, roof go <laughs> inside. Okay, each one, all right, who honored God, and all the names of those who written inside that particular. A scroll or book, and God of the angel armies, Jehovah Sibao, right, the one who protects the warrior. What did he say? They are mine. Okay, all these people who honored him, right, belong to him. So first, it was the type that God say belong to him, and when these people bring how they return back to God, God pronounce over them, confirm to them again. You who honored me belong to me. You are mine. Okay, very, very, very distinct. All right, because that time you have the Jews and the Gentiles. Right, the whole world doesn't know God. It is God was only revealed to the Jewish nation, to the nation of Israel. Right, through the Torah, the laws, and all that, and they follow and they obey and they experience God's supernatural blessings upon their life. Gentiles all just only. Uh, saliva drop from uh, outside. <laughs> they can only look. They do not have a god. Remember, Paul says they are the Gentiles have no covenant, have no god, right? No promises. Very sad, right? But the Jews were special people. Okay, continue. They will get those who honor the Lord will get what. Special treatment. All of you love special treatment. <laughs> Senior citizen got a special treatment, right? They got special treatment. And when I go into action, I will treat them with same consideration and kindness the parents give the child who honors them, right? So honoring is like similarly similar to a parent who uh, the child who honors the parent. So normally, how does a child honor the parent? <laughs> so I began from her her uh, heritage. They uh, honor parent by giving money, right? When they start to earn, that's how. But all children belong to the parents, right? Technically, all belong to them. But those who honor them get special treatment. <laughs> Correct or not? If you honor your parents, you got the chicken drumstick. <laughs> The one who didn't honor, go ahead, get the chicken backside to eat, right? <laughs> and then in the wheel, wow, bigger portion will give them and say, why Coco get more? Because uh, every month he give me all. <laughs> then you, you didn't even give me one cent. Mm, but all belong to him. Okay? So we can say today, all belong, we all belong, we are all God's children. But God is a God of honor. All right? And when he also wants to receive the honor from us. Okay, so once more, you will see the difference it makes between a person who does the right thing and the one who doesn't, between serving God and not serving Him. So this one is righteousness. Okay, so honoring God, honoring parents is a righteous thing to do. Okay, it's a right thing. Okay, then in this version, the Lord. Almighty says, these people will belong to me. One day, I will come to judge everyone. At that time, I will bring together my own special people. I will not punish them. I will take care of them like a father takes care of his son who serves him. See, God has chosen all the whole nation. But then, for those of his chosen uh, Israelites or Jewish people, Special treatment is given to those who honor him. And how? Through their obedience, through their tithing and offering okay, to the Lord. So this, and they, they are exempted from 
punishment, very special. Huh? So you know your favorite uh, brother, sister of your mother, <laughs> do wrong, exempted. <laughs> okay, won't be punished. If you are not the favorite, the cane comes. Okay, but okay, yes, you can see this still as under the law. Okay, but let's continue because <clears throat> it's so amazing what God has set for the Jews, which through this honoring, they are going to experience Abraham's blessing, right? And Abraham was above the law, or rather before the law, okay? <clears throat> they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. Then you will say, isn't every, every Hebrew child his? Technically, yes, okay? But especially for those who honor him, God declare, pronounce, say they are mine. The Lord of hosts, in the King original Hebrew, this is another uh, translation word used to describe the word special. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. It's a very close relationship, okay? The father and the son. And he says, this word that has been used to translate jewels or special treatment is the word segula okay segula and the word segula means can be mean treasure jewels possession property value property wealth okay that means these special ones whom i say are mine okay are my wealth my segula so Let's look what is segula, right? In Hebrew or Aramaic, it is made of letter mem, eh, sorry, samek, gimel, okay, Fa uh, Abigail's favorite letter, <laughs> and then lamek, and the hay, hay, which is the breath of God. You can also the grace of God, yeah, the goodness. So samek is protection, commitment, support, right? 60 people being your bodyguards support all right god protecting that is a powerful letter all right protection support committed god is committed then you have gimel which means i'm connected to a continuous flow there are many other meanings right just i like this one just for today uh continuous flow of abundance and this is the year of pay gimel before we i think next month or so in one or two months, we will move into the uh, Jewish year of Pei Dalet, okay? The fourth letter. So, preparing for the flow, the abundant flow, okay, of Abraham's blessing in giving and sharing, okay? Then you have Lamed and He, right? It's always looking up, right? Learning, teaching, looking up, not getting the information from this world, but from above, because you are born from above. Okay, so you follow the laws of above. <laughs> Immunity to this world, ambassadors. Okay, all right. Now, in Romans eleven sixteen, if you offer the first piece of bread to God, then all the bread will belong to God. If the roots Abraham and the, which are actually Abraham and patriarch. Uh, and the patriarchs of a tree belong to God, then the branches, the Israelites, will also be his. Okay? You understand this? The first piece, the first part, the first tenth, okay, of the bread goes to God. Jesus is actually like God's type to us, right? Then the whole thing belongs to God. It's one is made holy, one part, the tenth part, Everything is made holy. And in John 15, we see Jesus said the same thing. I am the sprouting wine and you are the branches. Okay, so for the Jews, the <clears throat> who was the, uh, this one? The root was Abraham and the Petra. Then the branches are the Israelites. Today in Christ, Jesus said, I am the vine. If you, you are the branches, we, okay? We are now joined to Jesus, right? If you live in union, as you live in union with me as your source, 
This part you can see in the tide. Source of everything. Remember what Abraham said to Melchizedek, to king of Sodom? I don't want anything from you because I don't want you to become my source. Indirectly, he's saying, right? I don't, it's, you, are not, you are not the one who made me rich. That means the source. Ah, right? Today, we choose and acknowledge Christ, God, Jehovah, as the source of our wealth, of everything that we, live, we need to live on this earth. He's the source, not the boss, <laughs> okay? Not the one who pay you. The source is God. And how do we remember in faith or with God, spiritual realm, God has done certain things. We need to respond, right? Because even Jesus saved the world, forgave the sins of the whole world. It is not the whole world is saved. It depends on the person to embrace it, to acknowledge Jesus and say, I want you to be my savior. So same thing, to be the source in our life is for us to respond and tell God, I want you to be my source of provision in my life. Okay, all the needs. And <clears throat> that's how we acknowledge or honor him as the source in our tithing. All right, in that tent that we give to him and we are saying to God, with this, I acknowledge you that you are my source of provision on this earth because we don't need in heaven, <laughs> okay, on earth. Fruitfulness, which means many, much, large, abundant, plenty, or you will bear much fruit, will stream from you. But when you live separate from me, you will be powerless, all right? So when we not just receive Jesus and then uh, don't know what's next, <laughs> okay, there are, a lot of things, that's why God gave instructions in the Bible, right? And there's so many uh, words in the Bible, in the Word of God. Each is telling us how our lives can be enriched and powerful in Christ on this earth. So here, to be fruitful, to have plenty, abundant, large, is when we understand that we are, Jesus is the vine. We are attached to him. He is the source and we acknowledge it through our tithing because the material things are bought from money, right? Yeah. So that money to say to God, first it belongs, the ten belongs to God, right? And then the rest, he asks us, you can use it, but the rest is made holy when we give back what belongs to God. So main thing here is, God wants us, oh, today we finish very fast. <laughs> God wants us to realize in tithing, both the tithe and the tither belongs to him. Okay, this is not from anywhere, right? From the Holy Spirit as he put it inside my heart. This tithing, which has been so misunderstood, okay, and... 10% of my money. I already cannot pay the bills. <laughs> Why go on the take? You don't see that in the tithe and the tither, God wants us to know that we belong to Him and then acknowledge Him as the source of provision in our life. And when He is the source, He not only gives you a little. Remember the youth? The youth will grow. So in the beginning, it may you may not see yet. Okay, because the youth is the beginning of wealth, segula, God's wealth. Each one of God's children who come back to him is a very personal thing. The relationship between the tither and God. Okay, so that's why we don't ask people just simply tithe. They need to understand their relationship. Right from the beginning, when tithe, tithing was instituted or practiced by Abraham, it was a relationship. It, Melchizedek blessed him with victory. Right first, it was God. First, Abraham walked with God, okay? Abraham acknowledged God. God called him a friend. He obeyed God in every area of his life and he received tremendous blessing, okay? Then he got the victory, material things and people as well, and he met Jesus. He met Melchizedek. 
And Melchizedek did what first? Gave him bread and wine, okay? Which signify provision as well. There's going to be abundance of provision to give to not just the victory he had or the, the salary we got from the job or whatever. There's going to be much more. That's how he blessed Abraham. And Abraham, in return, acknowledged Melchizedek or Jesus forever, now and forever, you will be my source. You will be the one who will make me wealthy, who will cause the promise, the covenant promise to manifest. And has it manifested? Yes, we can see it today in our time, all right? 430 years later and then 2,000 years from there. 430 years after Abraham, Moses came in with the law, right? Which also contained the tithing and offering laws, okay? For the blessing of the Jews. And today, we have this as if we understand Right, many say, I want Abraham's blessing. <laughs> but today we are not forced to do this. But if this applies to the Jews, and we are Abraham's descendants. In, in, remember, the Jew has the youth inside. Jerusalem has the youth. Jesus Christ, Yeshua has the youth inside. And we are God's children, whether Gentile or Jew, all one already. So this is for us up to the person, the believer, not by law or force. If we see a revelation in this, then what the Jews did in tithing and offering is they inherit Abraham's blessing. For us, if you read in Galatians or Romans, because I didn't want to put so many scriptures up, it's talking about we have now, in Christ, not just Abraham's blessing, an extra, which is the promise of the Holy Spirit. So we have more, right? Which is the blessing, the material wealth, plus the Holy Spirit leading us, making wise decisions, etc., etc. All right, giving us the joy, the peace, the, and everything that comes in with the Holy Spirit. What belongs to Him? Remember just now, Segula? Right, the tithe belongs to him, and the tither who honors, brings the tithe, belongs to God. God affirm it. He will treasure, he values, he supports. You have the summit, and he protects, and he gives them supernatural, miraculous blessings. The blessings of the Jews were very, were very much miraculous. Right, first their land was already fertile <laughs> okay that was a, a act of god right no matter what men do you if it's infertile it's infertile already you plant whatever you can, cannot grow but when god's youth comes in blessing becomes fertile miracles happen and the word of miracle in the jewish uh, hebrew letters or hebrew word is consists of the noon and the samet okay that's miracle miracle means god do one all right god initiate and it says the noon represent the faithful one all right the person who is bent remember the youth the humble man also okay and the lord's encompassing support yeah so man, we can today in christ all right just experience the basic blessing of god all right, providence. Yeah, God provide. If we if we know if we know lah, huh? <laughs> some people also don't even know, right? That God loved them. God that's why God provided what? Manna, right? In the wilderness. And at that time they haven't gone into the promised land. The promised land got more things than the wilderness. But in the wilderness is God's grace. He still gives you bread to eat. You still have enough <laughs> enough to eat enough to drink that means survival you still survive by god's grace but in the promised land are the warriors okay who will go in they are the ones who will take the land they will take the milk and honey they will take the abundance the fruits of the land okay the 
what God said to Abraham. Right? I will give you the land. Those who died in the wilderness, they had enough for everyday survival. But they didn't have Abraham's blessings. They didn't experience that. It was only those who went into the promised land and they, of course, at that time, obeyed all the laws of Moses, which included this one. Tithing and offering was part, if they, if they choose to obey, lah, even that time, God also didn't force them, right? <laughs> okay, but this is available to us today. Okay, as because we are no more either Jew or Gentile, right? Jew receive what? Abraham's blessing. If they follow, they have to follow, okay? And Gentile today in Christ, if we follow, we also receive Abraham's blessing plus more. Okay, the spiritual part as well. Excited or not? <laughs> the youth, it just starts with the youth. Right, the ten, the small part is a beginning of great things. The blessings of Abraham. Can you understand very simply put today? Yeah, but there's no compulsion here to anyone who doesn't want to tithe or what, right? Tithing belongs to the children of God. It was not given to the Jew, to the Gentile. It was very sacred, very special. It's like only you call yourself a Jew, then you have this to follow, this privilege. And tithing is a privilege. <laughs> it's a privilege, okay? Tithing and offering, all right? Planting seed, whereby God becomes the one who grows the seed, all right? is a privilege of a relation coming from streaming from a relationship with Abba Father. All right, the father of Abraham and all his descendants who are Jews and non-Jews, but born again through Jesus Christ. It belongs to us as well. Amen. If we would honor him. Amen. With what belongs to him, and we become one who belongs to him and when you belong to him you think he will take care of you more special <laughs> right then the one who doesn't honor him right technically as i said every believer will go to heaven right you have received jesus christ but on this earth on this earth not every believer experience abraham's blessing okay but god wants us to experience that yeah may not be the fullness may not be billionaire it doesn't really matter okay but definitely more than what you are struggling with today right because the youth of god's hand has come into your life when we put the tent back to him and honor him and continue to sow and plant in his kingdom of god right when we give beyond that tent right becomes the seed that god will multiply amen yeah praise the lord so i trust that no one here got it uh lawfully <laughs> as in the past all right because many people fear becoming a christian because he has been wrongly taught or i, I believe the devil has made it so this one scary that oh don't become a christian the first thing uh, you go to church they will ask you to they will take your 10 percent <laughs> what a lie okay of the devil that caused and then the people the believers of god live in struggle right in stress and all that not knowing the truth of this 10 percent or the one tenth right and the, the, the thoughts keep coming you give them you already you don't have money you going to take from you going to take for you and when we come to know the truth the truth will set us free and free to enjoy the blessings of god where we trust him so remember i've said before tithing giving is not gambling <laughs> gambling is go casino there today i put 500 inside ding 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 the roulette move okay? didn't strike <laughs> i don't want to do anymore it's not like that it is it comes from a 
relationship, right? A promise. The whole essence of uh, Abraham uh, tithing to Melchizedek and the uh, Malachi tree is a privilege of only those who honor him. And God said, you are mine. You are mine. You honor me, what belongs to me, you give me back, including yourself. So tithing brings a person back to, him, to God, actually. Yeah? You, be, <laughs> as a joke, right? We always follow where our money goes. <laughs> right? If we put in a certain bank, we check whether that bank will bankrupt or not. Right? When we really see the spiritual understanding and the mystery behind the tithe and the tither, that is a relationship with God. Because Malachi says what? God say, come back to me. Come back to me. So when the, the tide, when we start to tithe in faith and, and understanding, we are coming back to God. Yeah? We are acknowledging He is our source of our life, of everything, provision. And we are coming back closer and closer to Him. That's where we begin to bear the fruits and experience the blessings. God doesn't want His children to just have enough. He wants us to have more than enough. Also, remember part of Abraham's blessing is to bless them that they can be a blessing to others. If you only have enough, can you feed others? <laughs> no, right? Can you bless others? No. But God said, if anyone, right, who come and to this understanding, it's a covenant as well because it's inside the Mosaic covenant, right? So it means all the promises there are covenant promises. If we do that part for us to do, which is just by faith, start with a little youth, and God do his part to show you he is God. And all the nations, your neighbors, your, not because you buy 4D, <laughs> your neighbors, your relatives, and who all will begin to see the God of Magdalene, the God of Rebecca, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has made mailing rich. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Because she honors the Lord. Yeah. Not today is not by compulsion, but by free will. Your choice. Okay. And when we choose that, God mini it down. <laughs> I got mini book. And then he says, Angels, this name is inside these people who honor me. Go and ah, open the heavens and bless them. Okay? Amen? So the rich comes, it will be causatively growing. Okay? Not instant, not gambling, but begin to establish that relationship with God. Yeah, aren't we blessed? <laughs> like the Jew, right? We are so blessed, more blessed than them. Praise the Lord. And this is what God wants to tell all of you here. Because these opening doors coming, the year of Dalet, now is Gimel. And as we enter into that covenant relationship with Him in our tithing and return to Him, our whole being, doors are going to open. Doors of blessing. Many, many doors. Spiritual and physical material right and it starts with those who receive this revelation and say lord i want to act upon it i want to come into that covenant relationship i, I want abraham's blessings i want and understand that you will put me in that name and say you are mine in that book of yours okay so it's not compulsion yeah it's the holy spirit I never saw this youth thing in the type before. And I never read it anywhere. And, but God is so wonderful, so good to us in Beauty for Ashes. He loves us so much. I know you all love him so much too. <laughs> and in this area, doors will open up as we move into, the, before we go into more teachings on the Dalet. Dalet is the door, the physical realm. Right, and we are the Dalet in this physical realm. God is opening doors from the spiritual right, into inheriting and enjoying Abraham's blessings. Amen. Amen. Let's pray and give him thanks for how good God is to us.